fifth generation mobile networks. It's the future. It's already being tested by you. Is the money you're investing going to pay off? That's what we believe. Um, because it's not just, you know, a faster network. It's totally the opposite. It is a thousand times more capacity. It has a much better latency, so much faster in the ping rate. And on top of that, it's 10 times faster than the classical network. And this enables us to not only, let's say, use it for the consumer space, but even for the industry areas. But the amounts you're investing, how much? Can you put a figure on it that Deutsche Telekom is investing and how much the industry is going to have to put in for this new revolution? Look, anyhow, our industry is at that point in time at an investment peak. We are investing into fiber. Uh, connection everywhere, not only fiber to the home, but even, you know, the mobile sites where 5G is enabled are connected to fiber. This is the big part of the investments. And on top of that, we are adding additional antennas on top of the network. Mm. So we are investing Deutsche Telekom this year 12.5 billion. And just to give you a number, you know, in 2013, when I started as a CEO, we were at the edge of 9 billion. So that's the peak rate of the investment which we have. It's almost 20% of our revenue, which is going into the new infrastructure. Peak investment. Talk to me about cash to splash in terms of consolidation, in terms of M&A. You've been busy in the Dutch areas. We know that you've put money into Austria. What about Central and Eastern Europe? Hey, look, Deutsche Telekom is the biggest European uh, telecommunication operator. And we are uh, with 11 markets in Europe. Um, uh, and we have now intra-market consolidation. We are driving, for instance, in Austria, the consolidation with UPC, where we bring mobile and fixed line together. We're working on a consolidation in the Netherlands, where we bring two mobile operators together. So this is, let's say, happening in Europe. There's nothing happening cross-border M&A at that point in time. We are much focusing on strengthening our position within the markets. And then we have the US which is a new position as well. You know we are growing uh, double digits in 19 quarters now in a row. Um, and in this area, no M&A at that one planned, but more the organic growth for all the new areas which we are building with our infrastructure. What about stopping M&A in your home turf? What about Liberty Global assets being eyed by Vodafone? You don't like it. Are the regulators listening? I think it's totally unacceptable, um, this kind of deal, because it's creating a new monopoly. It's dominating in the TV markets. It's going to dominate in the housing associations, where they have a certain legal privilege. And it's going to be, let's say, even a domination in the cable infrastructure. While these guys are unregulated, Deutsche Telekom in the fixed line still fully regulated. I think that's totally unfair in the competition, and I'm asking for fair competition. But the analysts think the deal is going to go through. How do you fend off the competition? Look, it's too early to say. There's even no deal at that point in time. But I just want to claim that, you know, if this deal is going to happen, um, we have to see a total different landscape. I think it's anyhow not approvable from what I see from the past of this uh, cable network in Germany. But anyway, we will see when the deal is coming and what the authorities then might decide. What about the US? You were talking about the fact that there's no deal there. You didn't get Sprint. What's the future for the United States? Because growth is slowing for T-Mobile US. Look, we have invented a totally um, uh, un, uh, negative uh, uh, perceived industry in a new way. Magenta Telecom has created a, the uncarrier proposition. And since 19 quarters in a row, 19 quarters in a row, we've grown with more than 1 million customers. But the growth is slowing. No. But look, look, the only one who is gaining growth is us. And we have a balance of new customer growth and our profits and free cash flow that we are able to invest. Last year, we bought more than 30% of the 600 megahertz spectrum. What is that? More? We need that for, you know, getting deep coverage across the country. And we are now opening now uh, a lot of areas. We had 230 million pops covered. Now we've gone into 330 million already. And this is a new area of big growth for um, T-Mobile in the US and the uh, team around John Ledger and Mike Siebert. You're going to buy more spectrum there? No, I think, you know, uh, now is a break. Uh, there will be 5G spectrum coming at one point in time for uh, the new applications which we are planning, but we have plenty of spectrum which we have to deploy at that point in time. Uh, and we are growing now organically in the market with our customers. Tell me about my hometown. Tell me about the UK. You've got investments in BT, Brexit. Still a headache? Um, look, um, it has been a headache, to be honest and straight, because, you know, we have... Uh, brought the EE business into BT and got um, a shares in exchange to that one um, uh, due to the Brexit decision, due to the pound-euro uh, uh, relation um, uh, and due to the, uh, the tough regulation environment you know, we were facing in the UK. Um, we lost some value on that one uh, and depreciated that. 
But what I see in BT, what they are doing, how they are attacking uh, the market, the convergence, mobile and fixed line, bringing it together, the good portfolio of content on top of that. I think this is a recipe for success. And I'm convinced, you know, we're going to see, you know, big recovery on our stock in the, in the UK as well.